Hello everyone and welcome. There are multiple ways to migrate your self-managed MySQL database server to an Amazon Aurora MySQL cluster. In this video, I'm going to show you how to migrate from a self-managed MySQL to an Aurora MySQL using physical restore from a backup using Amazon S3. My name is Surender Mani Mohan. I'm a database specialist solutions architect focusing on MySQL engines here at AWS. Let's quickly go over the agenda. First, we discuss about the available options to migrate from a self-managed MySQL to an Aurora MySQL. Then we'll discuss about the migrating from a self-managed MySQL to an Amazon Aurora using Percona Extra Backup and an S3, followed by a demo and its best practices. Let's jump right in. There are a few different options to migrate from a self-managed MySQL to an Aurora MySQL cluster. I would highly encourage you to consider all the options then narrow it down to your specific requirements because we often get asked by our customers, what is the best way to migrate? The answer is, it depends on your requirements and the use cases. Let's discuss about each of these options briefly here. The first option is physical restore from a backup using Percona Extra Backup on an S3 method. Physical restore is basically copying the database directories on the files and restoring it on the target database. Percona Extra Backup is a well-known backup tool from a, from a Percona for a MySQL engine. If you're already using this tool, you can just upload the backup to an S3 and then restore it to an, uh, restore it to an Aurora cluster, then set up a binary log replication for a near zero downtime migrations. The second option is logical export and import method using MySQL native tools. Logical backup tools basically dump the logical database structures like a create create databases and table statements, and it contents as a part of insert statements, then replay those statements in the target. You can just use a binary log replication after loading, a data, after loading the data for a near zero downtime migrations. The third and final option we have here is AWS Data Migration Service, which helps you to migrate the data databases from your on-prem environment to AWS quickly and securely. It is available in AWS management consoles where you can able to create the endpoint and point your source and the target instances. It will load the data and do the change, change data capture as well. So if you want to move away from a commercial database engines to an Aurora MySQL, then you can use AWS data migration service along with other tools called schema conversion tool. Basically you just use a schema conversion tool to convert your database and objects into a MySQL compatible format. And then you use the AWS data migration service to migrate the data on the changes. But in this video, we're going to discuss about the first option, which is physical restore from a backup. And I'll show you a demo as well on that method. So before we go into the demo, I just want to quickly talk about, about this method a little bit more, and then we'll go into the demo. So physical restore from a backup is a preferred option for the larger data set migrations. The reason being physical restore is much faster than the logical restore because it doesn't have to repay the SQL statements, which is very con very time consuming to rebuild the databases. And if you're already using Percona Extra Backup to take the backup in your environment, then it is a very simple option to use. Aurora supports both full and in incremental restores using this method. So you just have to upload the full backup and followed by an incremental backup to an S3 bucket, then perform a restore. And Aurora supports physical restore from backup for, for both MySQL 5.6 and 5.7 versions. So if you're running 5.6 version, then you can just migrate to an Aurora MySQL 5.6 and same for MySQL 5.7 versions as well. And if you have any downtime, re downtime requirements, then you can use the binary log replication to minimize the cutover downtime. So let me quickly walk you through the, how the physical restore from a backup works in Aurora. So here you have a MySQL instance that's running in your uh, that's running in your data center or you're self-managing an EC2. So you first create the backup using the Percona Extra Backup tool on your MySQL server and upload that backup to an Amazon S3 bucket. And once you upload the once you upload the backup files to an Amazon S3 and then you restore that backup to an Aurora MySQL cluster. And if you have any downtime requirements, you set up a binary log replication between an Aurora and your self-managed MySQL instance. And then once a replication is caught up, 
you're going to cut over to a Aurora MySQL instance. Next, before we move into a demo, there are a few prerequisites that you'll need to be aware of. Percona Extra Backup versions must be 2.4 or higher. And Aurora cluster that you're planning to create should be in the same region as the S3 bucket. So make sure you're creating the S3 bucket in the same region where you're planning to create an Aurora cluster as well. And set up and record IAM permissions beforehand. If not, you can let the Aurora create the necessary permissions to access the S3 bucket. I'll show you how to do it when you're doing the demo. And if you are thinking on using the binary log replication to minimize the cutover time, then you need to enable the binary log on the source and set up an appropriate retention period for the binary log. Here's my demo setup. I have pre-provisioned my EC2 instance and I have installed MySQL server with some sample data set. And I also installed the Percon Extra backup tool in the same instance. So to simulate the actual working environment, I created the EC2 instance in a separate VPC. And I'm going to be creating or restoring my Aurora instance. I'm going to be in a separate VPC. And also I have created the S3 bucket in the same region where I'm planning to where I'm planning to create the Aurora cluster. And that's, those are my um, demo setup, which I pre-provisioned. With that, let's jump into the demo. All right, let's go to my EC2, EC2 management console. So this is my EC2 instance, and this is where I installed my MySQL server, and I also installed the extra backup tool on the same EC2 instance that we'll be using for this demo. So it's running on T3 Lodge. It's a smaller instance, but it's just fine for this demo. I just want to show you the concepts and how you do the backup. So now let me SSH into my EC2 instance. So I already SSH into my EC2 instance. Let's let me first show you the extra backup version that I installed on this on this instance. So the extra backup dash dash version. So I'm running an extra backup version 2.4.23, which is met the which met the prerequisite. So we're going to be using the same extra backup version. If you're not, if you're using lower version, upgrade to a higher version and then take the backup. Next, what I'm going to show is we're going to be using this, this MySQL server to take the backup and also set up the replication. In order to set up the replications, you have few prerequisites that you need to set. One is, this is my my.cnf my file. So here you need to have a few parameters. One is a server ID and the log expiry days, log expiry log days, which is like how long you want to retain the binary log for. So if it's a large, larger data set, consider um, having that to a bigger number, like maybe five days or seven days. And the binary log format I set to row, and then the max bin log file size I set to two gig. And then the I gave the binary log name, which is a log dash bin. And the next one is bin log row image, which I set it to full and checksum, I disable the checksum, a log slave update is set to true. If you're using read replica to take the backup, then set it to true. Now let's log into my MySQL server. And then, so now I'm into a MySQL server. So let's first check the version that this MySQL server is currently running. So which is running on 5.7.32. That's good. Next, I want to show you the schema that we want to migrate from this database server to an Aurora cluster. So I downloaded the MySQL samples, sample data set, which is an employee schema, and it has a bunch of salaries, and the data set is less than 200 MB, so which is fine for this demo, so let's go with it. So these are the two things that I wanna show you on the MySQL server. So let's exit out of this, and let's take the backup using the extra backup. Let me copy and paste the extra backup command. So this is extra backup, and you're providing the user credentials and you're providing the stream as XP stream. And I'm providing the target directory. And also the next thing which I'm doing is splitting the backup files into 100 MB files. So if you have a larger um, data set that you want to migrate, consider splitting the backup files into maybe one gig file or two gig file. So it makes your restore backup and restore much faster. Now let's go ahead and run this backup file back a command. Okay, now it's running. Okay, the backup is completed. So it's 200 MB, so it's pretty fast. So it's already completed. So now what we're going to do is, now 
let's go ahead and list the files. So we have a little more than 200 MB because we're taking a backup file for a whole server, which is 200 MB, which is fine. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to upload these backup files to an S3 bucket. So I already created a S3 bucket. So let's go ahead and upload these files to an S3 bucket using the AWS CLI command. So let me copy and paste the CLI command here. So it's a straightforward. So you're going to be providing AWS S3 and then a copy command to copy the files from the, the local directory to an S3 backup files. And you won't be doing to a recursively. So let's go ahead and run this. So three files copied there. So next, what we're going to do is let's just check, verify all the backup files are copied to an S3 bucket. Okay, it's fair, well and good. So it's already copied. Now what we're going to do is let's go over to the RDS management console and restore the backup files to an Aurora cluster. Let me open. Okay, so now I'm in the RDS management console. So we're going to select restore Aurora DB cluster from an S3. And it will take you to a create database by restoring from an S3 page. Here, you're going to be selecting your S3 bucket where you stored your backup files. And if you have any prefix, you're going to be providing that here. I don't have any prefix. So I'm going to leave that as a blank. Next, we're going to be selecting the engine type. The engine type, I'm going to select as an Aurora by default. And next, I'm going to select the latest version. So if you want to, if you have any version preference, you can select the latest version. If not, you can go with the default, which is fine. And the next is an IAM role. IAM role is basically like Aurora is asking a permission to go and read the backup files from an S3 and download those backup files and restore it. So if you already created the IAM role, you can use them. Or if you don't have, you can just select the create new role for me as a part of the restore process. Aurora will take care of creating a new role and doing it. For this demo, I already created the role. That's Aurora dash s3 dash restore so i'm going to be using that for this and the rest of the other process are pretty much the same so you'll be providing your cluster information or credentials on the vpc network password and so on so that you'll be providing so it's, it's pretty straightforward that you'll be using it so if you go all the way down next we have a create database so let's go ahead and create database there All right, so the cluster is restoring. So it's going to take a few minutes to restore the cluster. Depending on your data set, it might take a while. So um, let's see. So it goes through a number of phases to know to create it. Okay, it took a few minutes to create the cluster. Now the cluster is in available state. So now what we're going to do is we're going to log into my Aurora cluster and verify if all the data is restored properly. And then we're going to set up a binary logger application. So let, let me capture the endpoints and then let me go to my terminal and log into my um, Aurora, Aurora clusters and verify if the data is there. So now I'm in my EC2 instance. Let me copy and paste the command. So let me log into my Aurora cluster. And let's just verify if all the data is restored properly or not. As we can able to see, the employee schema on the tables has the same data site, uh, same data size, which is restored perfectly fine. So next, we're going to set up a binary log replication between this Aurora cluster and to an EC2 instance. So in order to do that, we need to have a binary log file name and its position when the backup was taken so that we can able to do the change data capture. So when, when you restore the Aurora cluster, it will emit the binary log file name and its position in the logs and events section. So let's go over and capture the, the file name and its position to set up the binary log replication. So this is a file name, the so mysql bin log four and the position is 1466. Now let's go to the terminal and set up a binary log replication between these two. So now I'm in the terminal. Let me just copy and paste the command to set up the replication. All right, so this is a command. So this is a basically a very simple stored procedure to set up a replication from an RDS instance. So you set external master and you'll be providing the IP address of the source instance and it's port, under port number and the username. So I created the replication user separately with the client, um, with this, the client and slave privileges. So that's a REPL underscore user. And the password 
Next, you're going to be providing the MySQL, that binary log file name and its position where it's restored from. And you're going to be providing the zero, that's for SSL encryption. I'm not using SSL encryption for this replication. So I'm just going to zero, let's, let's, let's enter. Okay, so we can see it's been no errors. Now let's start the replication. So it's showing a slave running normally. So let's verify if it's running normally or if there is any errors or not using show slave status. So here it's showing us a host name. The primary host name is 10.04.48 and it's waiting for masters to send the event. And it's a binary log file name at its position, relay log. And it's showing a slave IO thread is running and SQL slave SQL, slave SQL is running. So those are two are running, so which is good. There's no errors. Now let's verify the schemas once again to make sure um, all the schemas are there. To, in order to simulate the change data capture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sample table in the test schema on the EC2 MySQL, in, EC2 MySQL instance. And we're going to verify whether it's uh, restored or not, whether, whether it's replicated to Aurora or not. So now I'm in my um, EC2 MySQL instance. So I'm going to use, a, I'm going to create a new table in the test schema. So currently there's no tables. I'm just going to create like sample dummy table with just one ID. So just fine just to show whether, uh, whether the replication is working or not. Created the table. Now what I'm going to do is let's log into my Aurora cluster and verify if the, if the changes are replicated to Aurora or not. As you can able to see, it has been replicated. The demo, we can able to see the demo table in the test schema. Okay. Now, if you are, if you have application that's continuously writing to the source instance, so you're going to be doing the same. Um, you're going to be, the changes, whatever you're making on the source instance is going to replicate on the slave. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how can you monitor the replication lag between the source and the target before you perform a cutover. So in one way to do is using the show slave status. In the show slave status, there's a seconds behind master that shows that shows you how long the, the replica is behind your primary instances. The other way to monitor is you can monitor using the CloudWatch metrics itself. Aurora provide number of CloudWatch metrics to monitor the instance. So you can able to monitor using the show slave status command or you can able to check it using the CloudWatch metrics. I'll also show you the metrics that you can able to monitor. So let's select the writer instance and go to monitoring and select the replica lag. Aurora bin log replica lag. So that's a, that's a metric that we'll be monitoring for us. So when it's zero, when it's zero, which means like it's not lagging behind the uh, source instance. So which means when it's zero, you know, like it's not lagging behind. So you can able to cut over your application from your, from your source instance to an Aurora clusters. This, this is the one way to monitor it. So now let's very, let's say you have an Aurora, you have an, your binary log replication is fully caught up. Now you want to cut over your, your application from your source instance to an Aurora cluster. So I'm just quickly going to show you how can you able to do it. So now I'm still logged into my um, Aurora Aurora cluster. So now first what we're going to do is we verify, okay, there is no replication lag. We're going to stop the writes on the application. Once we start, and then we're going to stop the replication. Once we stop the replication, just to see like there's no replication happening between the source and the uh, target. And then we're going to be, re we're going to be running this command to say like it's going to be a standalone Aurora cluster, not going to be a slave any, not going to be a slave anymore. But before you do that, you can always verify whether the, um, whether command whether the slave has stopped or not using the uh, show slave status. Once done, and then you can just run this uh, stored procedure, reset external master to to tell Aurora Aurora cluster that it's not going to be a um, it's not going to be a replica of your source instance. It's going to be a standalone cluster and you can be able to point your application to an Aurora cluster and then you can successfully move on from there. Thank you so much for spending time here with us today. I hope you learned how to migrate from a self-managed MySQL to an Aurora MySQL using Percona Extra Backup method. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your AWS teams. As always, wishing you a very happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.